This video is going to be all about foundation in Revit. I'm going to be showing you how to create all different types of isolated footings, foundation walls, wall foundation, foundation slabs with slab edge, and personally, my favorite pile foundation. Let's go. Now quickly, before we jump into Revit, we'd just like to ask you to check out my website, balkanarctic.com. I'm going to link it up in the cards above and then also down in the description of this video. If you're serious about learning Revit, that's definitely the best place to be with over 140 hours dedicated to all of the interesting and complex topics inside of Revit. Now, without any further ado, let's jump straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit and we have this forest of columns. And the first thing that we would like to see is if the levels are set up correctly. So for this particular instance, I'm going to be showing you how to place isolated foundations for each of these columns. But first we need to check the levels. So if I open up the south elevation here, you can see that for levels, we have our regular 00, zero level, 0, 01, but then we also have top and bottom of footing. Now these two are really important for foundation because you want to mark out these two levels. Now here I can already see an issue where our columns stop at level 00. zero. Of course we want them to go down to the actual footing, so let's select one of them like this, right click and then go to select all instances in the entire project. And now I'm just going to change the base level from 00, zero to top of footing and then hit apply and that's going to change all of them. Now coming back to the 3D view, let's now apply the actual foundation. So for foundation, you want to go here to the structure tab and on the foundation panel, we have some tools and let's get started with the isolated foundation. You just wanna click on that and then here we can pick out which family and type we want to use. I'm just going to stick with this one. And then to place it, uh, you can either place it manually one by one. However, I think the best approach, especially when it comes to placing them on columns as well to use the add columns tool. So you just click on add columns. And now before you select any of the columns, you want to make sure that the level is set correctly. So here it's actually set to bottom of footing, but that's wrong. You want to set it to top of footing because the footing, well, the level of the footing is basically the top of that footing. So you want to set it to top of footing. Okay, so now with that set up correctly, we just make one broad cross selection across the entire project. And as you can see, it's going to select all columns and each one is going to get a foundation. Now it's giving us a little preview that looks correct. So I'm just going to hit finish and it's going to apply all of that foundation. Now I can hit the escape key a couple of times and now let's make some changes. So I'm just going to select one of them again, right click all instances or select all instances in the entire project, just like this. And now let's change it. So I'm just going to pick out this one, for example. And here I want to show you where if you do it like this, and perhaps you made a mistake, you don't want it to be oriented like this, you want to flip it to the other side, you just need to hit the space key once, make sure it's selected, hit the space key, it's going to rotate all of them. So it's a really quick way to change the orientation. And then I want to show you a couple of other foundation types. So we have this cup foundation, it looks like this, it basically cups that column just like this. And then we also have this sleeve foundation that looks like that. So as you can see, it's just a sleeve for that column. So those are additional approaches for or additional types of isolated foundations that you can use. Moving forward for our second example, we have, uh, we have some columns, of course, with foundations. However, here, as you can see, they're grouped kind of in pairs. Now this presents us with an issue. So here, as you can see, the gap between these two isolated footings is quite narrow. And that's going to give you a lot of issues in terms of excavation, just how you set all of this up. So it might be a lot better to basically connect these two and have just a bigger piece of concrete. So you can do that by first uh, deleting all of this foundation. So I'm just going to make a cross selection like that, go to filter, check none and then just check the structural foundation, hit apply and okay and then just hit delete. Now I'm going to open up the uh, top or actually let's go to bottom of footing, just like this, 
zoom in and now it's time to place in our double foundation. So let's go here to isolated and then let's find the largest one that we have here, which is this one. And then you want to change the level from bottom of footing to top of footing. Now you can actually see it here in view. I can hit the space key to rotate it. And here it's actually quite hard to pinpoint the exact position. So I'm just going to place it like this, hit the escape key a couple of times and then change this to 1100 millimeters, just like that. Okay, so that should be correct. Yes, it is. Now I can simply select this one and then I can go to copy, make sure that multiple is selected over here, hit the escape key a couple of times, then hold the control key, select all of these again, uh, go to the uh, copy tool, make sure multiple is selected, and then you just copy it like this. And now we have this twin foundation or combined footing, and this is what that looks like. Moving forward, let's now talk about wall foundation. So here we have some walls, and what you can notice if I orbit around a little bit is that these walls go down to level zero, zero. Now, this is an easy fix. If we want to set them up to go to top of footing, I would simply select the wall and then change the base constraint to top of footing. However, this isn't the best way to go about it. So let me just go back one step just like this. So what I prefer to do is to actually have a foundation wall. So you want foundation walls because usually those are going to be just a little bit different in terms of the structure to the main walls of the building. So for that, let us then navigate down to level zero, zero, just like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to undock this 3D view and then dock it here off to the side so we can see what's going on. Okay, so the next step is just going to be to go to the wall tool, click on the wall tool, and then in the properties panel here, find the foundation wall. We have this foundation 300 millimeter concrete wall. So I'm just going to select that one. And for foundation walls, when you place them, see how depth is already placed or assigned and it's not something that we can change. So having this set to depth means when we're placing the wall, it goes from the level down and that's exactly what we want in this case. So let's just change this instead of unconnected to top of footing and then we can leave the location line at wall center line and now you just want to use pick lines and find the center lines of the wall here. So just like this, click and it's going to place that wall. Click, click and as you can see the walls appear. Now you may notice that we're getting these error messages and that's okay. It's just telling us that here in this view where we're clicking, we cannot see the walls that we're creating. And that's okay because I can see them here in the 3D view. Okay, so we're done. So I can just exit out of this and let's go back to the 3D view. So now let's place the actual foundation on these foundation walls. So for that, let's go to the structure tab, find the wall uh, foundation, just like this. And here you can pick out which one you want to use. I'm just going to leave it as is. And now it's simply a matter of picking walls. Now you want to be careful here. You want to pick the actual foundation wall, not the regular wall. If you click here, it's going to place that foundation kind of in between those and you don't want that. So let's go back and place it here on this wall. I personally prefer to orbit down and then I can easily select all of these walls quickly, just like this. And now we have this wall foundation. Hit the escape key a couple of times. We can also change them. So let's select it, right click, select all instances in the entire project. And now I can change this to, for example, this one for a thicker foundation, if this is something that we need. Moving forward, let's talk about slab foundation or foundation slab. So here we have a lot of columns. They're very close together. So this is a perfect opportunity to use slab foundation, which is just going to be one big concrete slab to combine all of these. So for that, let's go down to the project browser and then in the floor plans, let's find the uh, top of footing, open that up, zoom in a little bit. And then here, let's go to structure, go to slab, and then in the properties panel, pick out which type you want to use. I want to use this one. And in this case, I'm just going to be using the rectangle draw tool with a offset of 600 millimeters. Hit enter, and then I'm just going to click here, 
extend to the other side, click here again, just like this. And also I want to change the span direction. I don't want it to go like this horizontally. I want it to go vertically. So let's go to span direction, use pick lines, and then just pick this line. Hit finish. And there we go. Now, when we go to the 3D view, this is what that looks like. Now, if we want to make this even more rigid, what we can do is add a slab edge. So here on the foundation tab on the slab tool, we have a little drop menu and the slab edge is the tool that's hidden here. So if I click on that, I can place a slab edge. So you just come here to the edge of the foundation, you find the bottom edge and you click and it's going to add that slab edge. And now I can place one here, I can orbit around, place one here and here as well. And now we have that slab edge assigned to our uh, foundation. Hit the escape key a couple of times, and there we go. And finally, we're at my favorite, which is pile foundation. Now pile foundation works pretty much the same way as isolated foundation. However, there is one thing you want to check. Now, if I open up the south elevation here, you can see that we have added an additional level called hard density soil. So the whole point of pile foundation is that you have a pile that goes down past the soil that's not adequate down to the hard density soil, which can actually hold the building in place. And then we basically anchor our building down to that. So it makes sense to mark that out with a level in our uh, project. Then let's go back to the 3D view. Let's go to structure and then find isolated foundation in the properties panel. You just want to make sure you're using a pile cap uh, family. And now let's use at columns. And before we select, make sure that here this is set to top of footing, select all columns, looks good, hit finish. And there we go, hit the escape key a couple of times. And now we have that pile foundation. And most importantly, if we double check in the south elevation, we can see that the piles are actually reaching the hard density soil, and they are anchored there. And this is exactly what we want to see for this type of foundation. Okay, so that's going to conclude this video. If you'd like to get access to all of these foundation types and all of my other Revit project files, well, you can find all of that on my Patreon page, which I'm going to link up in the cards above and then also down in the description of this video. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to check out my website, balkanarctic.com, for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.